So making this change was probably one of the best things I've done for my smart home so far. Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on Bite of Geek. Today I'm going to talk to you about what I think has probably made one of the biggest differences on my smart home network so far. So if you're new to the channel, you've not been watching any of this series, there's a link up above if you want to go and follow what I've been doing. But basically uh, I played around with Home Assistant a number of years ago, uh, basically put it to bed and never touched it again. And recently I've kind of started that all back up again. Uh, different viewpoint on the things, the approach that I'm going to take with it. And one of those things was using Zigbee for uh, some of my devices. I wanted to use it more within the network. And, uh, you know, I did a video, uh, it's in that playlist, with uh, where I bought the Sonoff uh, Zigbee dongle. And, you know, I'd had a couple of devices off that, you know, some sensors and things like that. Uh, but everything else was still on Wi-Fi, you know, Toya-based uh, devices and things like that, all kind of like cloud-based devices. And I, you know, did a video on making that uh, local, so using, uh, you know, the Toya local uh, plugin uh, with uh, with Home Assistant. And I'd have a certain amount of success with that, but I always had issues with uh, bulbs, constantly filling up the logs on Home Assistant with being um, available, unavailable, just all the way through the day. Um, you know, delays in devices uh, kind of like coming on, um, not always turning off. It's just a multitude of things. Really, I just couldn't get the reliability with the Wi-Fi based bulbs. And, you know, I've decided basically to start uh, getting rid of all those. Um, I've really had enough with Toyo-based uh, products, I, I guess, uh, certainly the, the Wi-Fi-based items. And I've, I've started to switch out more of those products now for Zigbee-based devices. So things like Zigbee-based plugs, so this is kind of UK variant, uh, pretty cheap, you know, fairly reasonable, uh, seems to work very, very well. Uh, I know some people have had issues with certain variants of this, you know, they're sold under a lot of different brands. Uh, this Zigbee one uh, does actually get uh, over the air updates uh, via Home Assistant, and uh, these have been pretty reliable for me. I've not had an issue at all with them, so, uh, you know, I'm very happy with those. Um, one of the other things that I've gone and done is to uh, swap out the uh, the bulbs that I use, so I had a lot of, uh, you know, fairly reasonably um, well-known bulbs, you know, LE Pro bulbs, you know, not cheap items uh, bought from Amazon. Basically, you know, just standard bulbs, really, you know, dimmable bulbs. Uh, but I'm going to swap those out for the IKEA uh, Tradfry uh, bulbs. So apologies for. Um, to anybody in Sweden if I've said that wrong, but basically, uh, you know, their bulbs, they're, um, you know, you don't normally, you know, associate IKEA with smart home tech, um, but, you know, they have quite a, a range, uh, you know, they, they have their own hub and things like that, but you don't have to use that. Um, you know, these bulbs hook up with Zigbee to MQTT on the Home Assistant and they just work, they work first go, uh, I could get uh, software updates, firmware updates for them as well. Um, you know, it did take a while to go through, but you know, latest version of uh, firmware updates on them, and they are super reliable. The response time on them is it's just miles better than the Wi-Fi based devices. Um, you know, my log files are no longer filled with devices becoming available and unavailable. Now I, I just have. Uh, you know, just the things that are actually happening on the uh, on the Home Assistant instance. So, you know, a massive um, you know improvement from that side of things. Uh, and you know, they're, they're basically the same price, if not a little bit cheaper for a, the equivalent product. Uh, so, you know, I'm really really pleased with that. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you need to understand how the the Zigbee network works. So, you know, you need to. Um, understand that you know devices need to be able to communicate and, and talk back to your 
uh, your dongle and you know if your devices are too far away you might lose some of that and that will actually affect your reliability hence the reason why i've gone for the uh, ikea bulbs and also the uh, zigbee based plugs as well because effectively these are all routers on the network so they are uh, enabling um, quite a, a nice mesh network to build up and in this diagram here you can see what my zigbee network actually looks like now so lots of uh, you know the akara devices the sensors the door sensors and things like that which aren't router devices you know a lot of these things are now starting to join up and they've all got really good uh, signal strength as well so really really happy with the way that this is uh, this is working out and basically now i'm slowly starting to uh, reduce my reliance upon uh, wi-fi devices and uh, you know even though my router is uh, you know more than capable of handling uh, you know a, a lot of wi-fi devices you know it's just the overall response times and the stability that uh, just wasn't really there with the wi-fi for, for some people it's probably absolutely fine for me you know with uh, solid walls and things like that it it just it wasn't great and um, you know it's kind of when you're stood there talking to Alexa or asking it to turn lights on or turn lights off and things like that and it's just not doing it or you know lights which are in a group it's turning half of them on and half of them you know are staying off it, it's just not a great experience all of that has gone away now so um, you know, if you haven't looked into Zigbee uh, as a as a networking protocol for your home assistant and your smart home, uh, I would really recommend that you do consider um, you know using it as part of that. Certainly for kind of like more of your um, what I would call day-to-day uh, -day devices. You know, those things that you you need that kind of resilience for. Uh, you know, if the if the internet goes off, they're all going to work internally. So. Uh, again, really good from uh, from that point of view. Obviously, there are other things like you know Z-Wave or, or Z-Wave if you're British, and, and things like Bluetooth as well now in in Home Assistant. So you know you have got a couple of options there. Um, but for me, Wi-Fi just wasn't doing it, and it was my uh, intention with with kind of like starting back out with Home Assistant again to to try and utilise uh, Zigbee as much as possible. So it's a thumbs up from me, but I'd love to know your thoughts you know what what are you using you know are you all wi-fi have you got a mix of wi-fi zigbee have you got something else you know let me know down below in the comments guys you know really interested to hear your thoughts on that and your experience with zigbee if you've gone completely to zigbee as well uh, certainly you know from from my where i am at the moment it seems to be really really uh, you know quite stable so um, let me know down below in the comments but if you've uh, enjoyed this video then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this but as always thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video bye for now